You're looking at one of the best teachers you're ever going to find in the state and in the nation, Andrew LaBarbera, math teacher at Raritan High School in Hazlitt, New Jersey, and advisor to the Interact Club. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? But doing great. We're going to see a clip from our partners at the NJEA uh, classroom close-up. You took your students to New Orleans. We're going to find all about that. Um, you wanted to make a difference. You believe in the concept of paying it forward, right? Absolutely, 100%. When did, by the way, before we see the clip, when did you know you wanted to be a teacher? Sixth grade. Get out of here. Sixth grade. Um, my teacher, Mr. Especially was a teacher. It was Mr. <laughs> uh, Mr. Camerano. Um, my parents were going through a divorce, and he kind of played a, an important role in my life, just stepping in and uh, kind of being a, a positive male role model. And I wanted to give that back. Isn't um, it amazing what teachers can do? It's, it's unbelievable. You know, the public really doesn't have a, a good idea, and teachers are kind of given a bad rep, you know, with our capabilities and abilities. We get too much money, this, that, and the other. I don't think you get too much money, but that's another story. Right, that's, um, that's not for here or there. Um, but you know what's great? When we see this clip, it'll be clear why so many of the students that you're with now, I think you went down there with 25, you said. Correct. In about 10 years, you're going to have somebody sitting in that chair and saying they became a teacher because of you. So just as you uh, think about that, watch this. This is from our partners at the NJEA Classroom Close-Up. The clip speaks for itself. Tens of thousands of people have been stranded, many without food, water, and medical supplies. Six years after Hurricane Katrina caused so much devastation, some of the hardest hit areas have been slow to recover. When one thing doesn't work out, what you should do? Try, try again. Try, try again. For math teacher Andrew LaBarbera, the opportunity to teach students about life while giving back to the community was impossible to ignore. Everything has to start with an idea. So the idea is to what? Go to New Orleans. Go to New Orleans. Make a difference. Rebuild. At Raritan High School, Mr. LaBarbera is the advisor of the Interact Club. Interact stands for International Action. If you ask the organization, that's what it stands for. But we're all about taking the initiative. You know, looking at, looking at a situation that most people would deem either impossible or improbable and unlikely to happen, and we make it happen. The decision was made to go to New Orleans to help in the rebuilding effort. I knew going into here that they were going to see the X's on the door. They were going to see where people died, where people didn't make out. They were going to see houses being destroyed. I'm going to show you um, some footage of that, and then we're going to talk about how we can go make a difference, how we can go there and we can turn this negative idea into a positive. So, after a rigorous proposal and approval process, after all the fundraising, the students who had committed to spending their spring break on a construction site were off to New Orleans. Hello there, chaperones on the bench. Hello. My role in New Orleans was um, just basically to be a chaperone, but um, on a daily basis, the chaperones too were working just as hard. I was using power tools for the first time. I think what drew a lot of the students to go to New Orleans was seeing the footage of Hurricane Katrina, seeing, you know, people's lives were lost, they were homeless, they had no food to eat and then they see how good they have it, and they wanted to see if they could make a change, make a difference. I put in windowsills, closets, I took a the rods, and some doors. Me and Ben came in closets, and a building water. A lot of that, a lot of fighting. High school kids, you know, so many, so many people would doubt on them, you know, and when I gave the kids an opportunity to go on an alternate spring break, give up their time, they jumped right on the opportunity. You know, we just have to believe in them. Give them a little, give them a chance. Give them an opportunity. I'm telling you, they'll blow you away. Blow you away. And they do, every day. Amazing. It's awesome. It gives me chills just watching that video. What were you feeling? Right now? Yeah, when you were saying that. Proud. Um, you know, it all starts with an idea. And, and high school students, you know, when I, when I first got into teaching four years ago, they negativity was was very apparent and I looked at them like why why don't you think you could do this the students yeah they were they, they didn't believe in themselves they didn't think that they could achieve you know different goals that they set for themselves so when I went in there and when I originally said to them why don't we why don't we go on Habitat for Humanity trip why don't why don't we just go do it mm -hmm. like Mr. L it's never gonna happen you know 
And I was like, you know what, guys, this is going to be a great life lesson. But do, what about the money? You have to raise tens of thousands of dollars. The money was the hugest issue on, on all parties. But what I told them was that if you're willing to work, you're willing to put the, the time right. in, that it would happen. And it did. How much did you raise? $26,000. Um, I set up kind of uh, these three phases. First phase was friends, families, trying to gain the support of your community because that's the most important, the foundation. The second phase was uh, going to different businesses, local, nationally, um, and asking for either a physical donation, monetary, or um, whether they give us, like for instance, the, um, a football team gave us different signed posters. Right. And then we would have a silent auction sell them. The third phase was going to the um, restaurants around our area and actually having like these nights out where a certain percent of the proceeds would go towards the Interact Club, which would then fund us together. You realize together. the skills that you taught these kids? Their, um, think about their okay. life skills. Leadership, communication, fundraising, business, being charitable, paying it forward, teamwork. Empathy. Em talk about that. Um, one thing that I wanted to show them was that if you can understand where someone's coming from, not that you necessarily have been through what they went through, but understand, um, and the spark and connection that you will create with them will allow you to do anything. So for example, down there, there was a gentleman named Chris. And Chris was, we were building one of his houses. See, Habitat requires that the individuals who are getting the homes have habitat sweat for equity. Humanity. Correct, right. Habitat for Humanity. A sweat equity, so they have to actually be a part of building their own home. Correct. And, um, you know, the students went down there with an open mind, and they actually interviewed Chris. And they were shocked that by dropping their, you know, their, their bound, not their boundaries, uh, dropping their wall and allowing to let someone that they've never met before and to talk to him, they were able to make a connection and relationship with him. And the kids cried. When, when we left, the students actually cried because of the impact that it had on them. I got to tell you, when you got into teaching, mm -hmm. did you have any idea that you'd lead an effort like this? Absolutely not. Never, uh, I, I never thought um, that I would have the opportunity to. I always dreamt of it. I always, you know, I have my message and my vision that I want to portray to the public. Which is know, what? Give them a chance. You know, give, give these, these students are going to be taking care of us one day. Yeah. And it's our job, our responsibility, whether you're, whether you're a teacher, a parent, a guardian, whatever it may be, to teach them the right skills and the right way to, you know, to be a productive citizen, you know. What kind of, before I let you out here, what kind of reaction did you get from your teaching colleagues? Um, it was mixed emotions. Um, obviously, anything that's new is uh, <laughs> a little difficult sometimes, and you know you're raising the bar for everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm that's always a good about thing, raising though. the bar. You have to, because if if what's the point in staying stagnant? Why why do we want to plateau? You never want to plateau. You always Status quo is not an option, right? Absolutely not. Did you were you an athlete? Um, I did karate when I was younger. I did uh, softball. I was a softball coach. I played uh, baseball, basketball, track when I was you're younger. You're competitive. Yes. It's a good thing. Absolutely. And I have to tell you something. We've had a lot of teachers as part of our classroom close-up initiative. You've led the way.